Hey guys, it's Big G. And today I want to talk to you guys about investing in blue chip artwork. So no longer do you have to be an ultra wealthy aristocrat to invest in blue chip artwork such as uh, Yahweh Kosama, a Claude Monet, a Leonardo da Vinci, those types. So before we start that video, I just want to thank you, the viewer. The channel is growing very quickly, so if you could hit that like and subscribe button, that would be very much appreciated. And just full disclosure before I start, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is based on my opinion on the art market. Um, so of course, do your research and due diligence ahead of time investing in blue chip artwork. So let's jump right into this video. So you may be asking yourself, why should I consider investing in blue chip artwork? Well, for starters, it's over a $1 trillion industry in growing. It's a very niche and sophisticated asset class of investing in art. It's, it's different from you know, investing in bonds or stocks or even crypto. It's a very unique and sophisticated asset class. In the past, it's been reserved for the ultra wealthy, the well-connected art connoisseurs, you know, the artists, those kind of milieu of people, which is very interesting in itself. And people in the past have collected and invested in, you know, quote unquote, blue chip artwork, which is the top artwork for a number of reasons. This entails uh, social clout and status, you know, collecting artwork and investing in art shows that you have prestige and sophistication. You're kind of in the know-how. And secondly, it's a very good asset class in terms of hedging you know, against inflation and it has that limited finite supply of supply and demand, meaning in layman's terms, there's only a certain amount of uniqueness and unique, unique number of artworks that exist in, you know, for example, there's only a certain amount of Da Vinci's or Picasso's that exist out there. So it's a mix of that social clout and that uniqueness of the art in terms of numbers that exist. So when you hear about blue chip, this means usually artists that have museum, museum grade quality and that have historical clout. You know, for example, you can name some major artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Renoir, Monet, Pablo Picasso, uh, Jean Michel Basquiat, um, Gerhard Richter, those types. And what makes them blue chip art artists or artworks for that, for that matter? First of all, they contribute, they've contributed historically to the art historical canon, meaning they have that legacy, they're part of history. Like they made different art that, you know, challenged ideas, made something exceptional. Like they have that social clout and people saw that and they collect that. So blue chip value in terms of the artworks, you know, it, 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 it conveys a message that the artwork is valued on the marketplace. And usually, you know, in terms of my experience as an art appraiser and working and studying at Christie's, usually it takes that upper tier level of artworks that are usually above like 100K to start per se. And that's based on auction records, um, what the works have sold for, appraised for, and for lack, lack of better words, you know, what the market is willing to pay for these art, artists' works. So it's different from an artist just starting out who doesn't have that history. They might be selling their artworks for cheaper. These artists have had years of history behind them. They have a proven track record of auctions and you know, things that people want in them to buy. So a lot of people invest in blue chip artwork and this includes a lot of you know, investment banks such as Citibank, JP Morgan, those kind of investment and portfolios that are trying to offer a diversification in their portfolios. Usually they'll allocate you know, a few percentage of people's you know, um, retirement funds and certain, um, certain businesses' equities into art for diversification. I know JP Morgan Chase has an arts department that they invest in um, specific you know, artworks. Of course, usually blue chip artwork. Other blue chip you know, art investors entail you know, the ultra wealthy. And this includes, you know, celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jay-Z, and, you know, even just the older art collectors that have been investing in art for years because not only do they like it, it's, you know, has a proven track record of these auction results and in terms of what people are interested in the artist. So guys, I just pulled up the stat and essentially the blue chip art market, which is the top 100 artists, for example, Monet, Basquiat, etc actually has an 8.9% um, aggregated exited return over the last 18 years over the S&P 500, which is tracking everything, the 500 top companies, 
at only 3.4%. That's more than twice of the S&P 500 returns. And that's, that's tracking all these major companies. There's exceptions to this list, especially lately during that bear market that we're seeing now. And this brings up another thing why the blue chip art market has had you know, these consistent, steady historical returns because the art, art is usually bought for a good hedge against inflation. And it's more of a longer term hold because it's less liquid than blue chip stocks, meaning that it's more physical. You can't just like really flip artwork as easily, even though you can, you know, you could just go on your app on Webull or for example, or Robinhood and just sell a stock really quickly versus art, which is more, more of a sophisticated longer term hold in terms of blue chip artwork. So there are pros and cons to investing in the art market and blue chip artwork. You know, as everything in life, there's no guarantee of past performance indicating future performance. Meaning that although blue chip artwork has an established canon of usually the top 100 artists, you know, taste can shift. For example, um, a good example would be Jeff Koons. Like Jeff Koons cranks out so many of these little balloon doll things that these corporations and people buy as pop art and kitschy, which is great. You know, it's established. He's a contemporary artist, a lot of respect. But, you know, taste can change. You know, even though Jeff Koons is probably going to have a lot of value in the, in the future, you know, things could change for a new histor art historical person to be discovered or more attention for buyers to buy and favor a certain artist over another. Um, obviously, Leonardo da Vinci is probably not going to lose a lot of value, probably gain more value <laughs> in terms of the, the future, as we saw with the $450 um, Salvador Mundi painting uh, of Jesus that sold for $450 million, which is ridiculous. I was actually there in the auction house, but that's another story. But obviously those types like Da Vinci are probably not going to go down in value. But a con is, you know, other artists that are more trendy, you know, like Cause, or for example, they might decline in value because of a change in consumer and art collector uh, change of taste. Other cons of investing in blue chip artwork would probably be in terms of the condition of the artwork. There's a lot of upkeep in terms of artwork similar to real estate that you have to physically you know, store and hang the artwork. Or for example, you have to condition it in the right temperature, the right frame. You have to have security because art theft is a major concern at museums and other things. And also forgery. There's a lot of really skilled forgers out there that have fooled the art market and have forged artworks that have sold for millions of dollars. There's, there's documentaries on the fact. But these are just a few cons just to you know, pay attention to in terms of the cons of investing in art, blue chip artwork. So the question is, should you invest in blue chip artwork? The answer is yes and no. Yes, if you are interested in exploring an alternative sophisticated asset class, that's different, you know, is maybe a longer term hold. You know, it's different aesthetically, you know. I would suggest investing in something you like, and especially with blue chip artwork, if you're comfortable holding longer term, and that parlays into what we're talking about in terms of liquidity, of volatility, and just that longer term hold in terms of that steady exited return. And yes, in terms of the blue chip art market beating the S&P 500 over 20 years steadily in terms of that performance return, which is very good. That's a very appealing thing. A lot of people have been you know, attracted to in blue chip art investing. And maybe no, if you're not comfortable with the volatility, maybe you're don't, you just don't like artwork, then probably not. Um, if you're not comfortable with holding longer term in that liquidity rate of artwork. So it really depends on you and of course what your interests are in Horizons. So obviously do your research ahead of time and see what's right for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel Big G. The channel is growing very quickly and I want to break down and share more alternative investment stories and more about art with you. So that wraps up my video. I hope you hopefully you like that. Feel free to leave your favorite artwork or art market thing in the comments below. And that's gonna wrap up the video. Thank you so much. Ciao.